Wood, smoking all my dragons, divine righteous, almighty greats, overachieving, never slacking. Today we got why Israel Israel loves the Philippines. So I'm going to hop right into it. Original link will be in the description. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go binge watch my Philippines playlist. And let's see why Israel loves the Philippines. Let's hear it. Israel and the Philippines have a very special relationship. And people don't really talk about it much. You see, the Philippines, despite being a world apart, separated by geography and culture, has a historical and wonderful relationship. Their relationship is deep and meaningful, and comes out to be amongst the most unexpected there is. And the type of international friendship that we talk about isn't merely about trade, security, or investments. They are built on something far more different. It's rooted in a shared history of struggle and survival. Moments when one reached out to the other in times of desperate need. To start off, this relationship went back to the 1930s. This was a dark time in world history, especially in Europe. Anti-Semitism was at its peak and Jews were being persecuted. Countries around the world were shutting their doors on these desperate people. But it should also be known that Jews themselves were being expelled from all across the world. At the start of the 20th century, some Jews were deported by Ottoman authorities during the First World War. In 1933, the Nazi Germany persecution started with Nazi boycotts of Jewish businessmen. And then, as history knows what happens next. By 1940, the so-called June deportation carried out by the Soviet Union in June and July 1940 as the fourth and fifth waves of mass deportations of Polish citizens from Soviet-occupied Eastern Poland also targeted some 65,000 Polish Jews who fled from the German-occupied part of Poland. Left and right, they were being kicked out. But the cusp of today's story does not belong to these expulsions but rather what happened halfway across the globe, in the Philippine Islands, something different was happening. President Manuel L. Quezon, who was in power at the time, made an extraordinary decision that was far ahead of its time. Despite facing opposition, he implemented a policy that would allow Jewish refugees to find sanctuary in the Philippines. He didn't just provide them refuge, he offered them a new lease on life. These were people escaping from the darkest times, and here was a country, itself under American colonial rule. Re That's very honorable to do. I had no clue about that. Uh, anytime somebody gives a helping hand when they don't have to, always honorable. Always. And that's how you create lifelong allies. So much respect. Reaching out a helping hand. And this was by no means an easy decision. The opposition he faced was harsh. His enemies criticized him for letting communist Jews in and even his political allies scolded him for it. Yet for some reason, President Manuel Quezon had sympathized with the Jews. Being a Catholic, which was also the biggest religion in the Philippines, had pushed him a year later to fight for the entry of 10,000 Jews from Germany and Austria in the Philippines. His rivals used- What I'd have to ask is, how did that change the dynamics of, uh, the, of, of, of the culture of the Philippines when that happened? Uh, I would also ask what what really what, when he was asked for example like of why he was doing this what was his official like reasoning what statements did he make as far as why he wanted to allow the entry of so many Jews uh there is also a quote saying nothing in this life is for free so obviously I can't be too green in thinking like oh you know but at the same time like then they say, you know, him being a Catholic, um, you know, maybe he felt like he wanted to help other Catholics that because he felt like those were his people. So I'm just pretty much leaving, leaving an open in mind and really trying to just get to a better understanding of what, what really happened here and why it happened. Used this idea to their advantage by calling Jews communists and claiming they wanted to control the world. They also said it would be difficult for the Philippines to manage the logistics. Further, some opponents had also distorted the issue, accusing President Quezon of not... Most people have no clue that in 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not... ...not providing land to farmers while offering land to Jewish refugees in the Philippines. But surprisingly, against all odds, President Quezon went ahead and provided visas to 10,000 German and Austrian Jews. 
Out of that number, however, only 1,200 made it to the Philippines. Some analysts pointed out the fact that the Philippines was later invaded by the Japanese. And truth be told, there wasn't really any economic gains or political favors in the fray. He did it because he believed it was the right thing to do. Even though the Philippines was not yet a fully independent nation, Quezon used what power he had to make a moral stand. This decision didn't just save lives, it laid the first stone in the foundation of a friendship that has lasted to this day. This early act of humanitarian aid was a defining moment in the... Remember what I said about lifelong friends, uh, generational friends, when, when you uh, reach your hand out when people need it the most, you know? With no expectations or no agenda? Relationship between the Philippines and Israel, or more accurately, between Filipinos and Jews. It showed that even when faced with great risks, the Philippines was willing to do what was right. This set the tone for a friendship that would later extend into more significant actions, actions that would further solidify the bond between the two nations. But you might get carried out by the fact that this was the only defining moment of their relationship. No, history carried on as the Philippines became a big friend of Israel. In 1947, after the Second World War, a big vote came out from the United Nations. The world at that time was looking at the question of Palestine, a territory that had been under British control. The proposed plan was to partition Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states. This proposal, known as the United Nations Partition Plan for Palestine or Resolution 181, was a, let's say, contentious issue. The stage was set and the stakes were high. If the resolution passed, it would lead to the establishment of the State of Israel. However, getting enough countries to say yes was a monumental task. But that day would come. Out of the 58 UN members at that time, 33 voted in favor, 13 were against, and 10 abstained. But what came out to be the most surprising is that the Philippines voted in favor of establishing the State of Israel. The Philippines was also the only Asian country to ever vote in favor. Okay, so you might then ask, why is this such a big deal? Well, because that vote was a close call. If the Philippines had voted differently, the majority needed for the resolution to pass would not have been reached. Or to put it simply, the Philippines vote was the tipping point. Israel might not have been established if not for that crucial yes from the Philippines. So in a very real sense, the future of an entire nation rested on the shoulders of this single vote. President Quezon's earlier actions, and then later by the Philippines, proved yet again a monumental feat to their friendship. But like Quezon's actions, these were also not a political strategy. The decision was grounded in the country's own recent history of fighting for independence and self-determination. It was an alignment of values, a gesture of goodwill, a continuation of the humanitarian spirit. Carlos P. Romulo, who was the Philippines' representative in the United Nations, spoke eloquently about the moral duty to support the Jewish people's aspiration for a homeland, echoing the sentiments of President Quezon's earlier actions. The impact of this vote reached far beyond diplomatic halls. It established the Philippines as a supporter of Israel's right to exist and self-govern, further strengthening the friendship between the two nations. It was an act that showcased the Philippines' willingness to support what it viewed as just and right, even when it stood alone among its Asian neighbors. In later years, the Philippines received military training and equipment from Israel. Israel has a highly advanced military and intelligence apparatus, and sharing this expertise was another layer in their expanding friendship. This was more than a simple transaction. It was a sign of deep trust and mutual respect. Today, it is well known that the Philippines employs a wide variety of Israeli-made equipment, from the Acero-class patrol gunboats to the Sabra light tank, Elbert Hermes 450, an unmanned aerial vehicle, and even a wide array of communication equipment. And aside from military ties, Israel and the Philippines are today exchanging trade, investment, and tourism to this very day. Although it is quite small, as in 2019, it was just about $254 million worth of trade. Tourism, on the other hand, saw around 30,000 Filipino tourists visiting Israel each year prior to the pandemic. And finally, there is also a small Filipino diaspora in Israel. 
Approximately 30,000 Filipinos reside in Israel, mostly as caregivers. The treatment of these migrant workers is generally better in Israel compared to other countries, thanks to labor agreements and cultural understanding. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Philippines has played such uh, an important just factor, period, throughout history. Uh, more so than a lot of people know because I didn't know anything about this information. Definitely going to do more research because, like I said, I still want to know from the people, uh, the people of the Philippines, of how that, how that really, what really changed when that happened. I, w I would just want to know how, how, how did that affect the people? I see as far as um, business and, you know, things like that, like them trading together and things of of that nature. I see what's going on with the with the suit and the tie people, the corp more corporate people, but as far as just the everyday life people, if you're from the Philippines or, you know, you have elders that was there that have a strong um you know, str a lot of knowledge and history, I would definitely like to know like how did that how did that change the dynamics of the culture, especially since like the rest of Asia was really against that and I want to study more of why they were against that. Uh and just and just really and really hear all angles before I just be like, oh, you know, uh, this is what it is, or that is what it is, and that's because of this. Because um truth truth of the matter is, uh, you know, it may have been, you know, just a, a great gesture, or it may have been may may have been more behind it. So uh I definitely just want to do my own homework and I feel like everybody should kind of have it a free, independent kind of mindset like that to where when you hear something or you study something, you should definitely do deeper research to to have more of an understanding because I definitely don't think eight minutes is truly enough for me to really get the full gist of what was what was go what was going on here as a newcomer, as somebody who's new to even even finding out about this. So uh but with that being said, let me uh let me go ahead and wrap this video up and uh, definitely keep me, like I said, if you're if you're from the Philippines and you have more knowledge on this, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, but the Philippines, yeah, they got their hands in a lot, a lot of history and, and a lot of things that I am figure, I'm finding out more and more that I'm just like, wow, they definitely been putting on. <laughs> but with that being said, this video was why Israel loves the Philippines and uh once again, if you're new to the channel, binge watch my uh, Philippines playlist. And I'll be back with more soon. Much love.